so now that we've seen that an ellipse is just a transformed version of the unit circle, we can actually go straight from the geometric definition to an algebraic definition. So we know that any point on the ellipse to its focus plus the distance from the point to the second focus is constant for the ellipse. We saw earlier that if you add the distance from the point to one focus plus the distance from the point to the second focus, we always get 2a, which is the length of the major axis. For the purposes of this exercise, we'll envision an ellipse centered at the origin. So 2a is the length across the major axis. And if that's the case, half or the semi-major axis is a. We'll call the length across the minor axis 2b. So we get a b each of there. And we're going to define the length from the focus to the origin to be c. With this setup, knowing that our distance from the origin or the center to each focal point is c, we have two focal points, negative c0 and c0. If we pick any random point on this ellipse, which we'll call xy, the distance from xy to this first focus plus the distance from xy to the second focus should be equal to 2a. We can set this equation up using the distance formula. So that first distance will be x plus c, because we're going to the negative c focal point squared, plus y minus 0 squared. So that's the distance from xy to the first focal point, plus the distance from x the other focal point should be equal to 2a. Now this doesn't look quite like the equation for the ellipse that we've seen so far, so we're going to need to do a lot of algebra. Here's the equation we're going to attempt to rewrite into a better form. The problem is we have two square roots on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to subtract this square root to the right hand side. So that is going to give me x plus c squared, and I just wrote y minus 0 squared as y squared, equals 2a minus this square root, x minus c squared plus y squared. Okay, now what we're going to have to do is square both sides. Okay, so squaring both sides is thankfully going to get rid of one of the square roots that we're dealing with. So that's going to give me x plus c squared plus y squared. And on the right hand side, we're squaring a binomial, right, two terms. So the first term will be 4a squared. We're going to get the product of the middle two, or the two terms, times 2, is going to be a minus 4a times the square root, x minus c squared plus y squared. And finally, we're going to get the square root squared. So we're going to get x minus c squared plus y squared. Again, we haven't made a ton of progress yet, that's a c, but we actually are able to cancel out two terms already. The y squareds cancel out. And if we continue, we can move all the non-square root terms to one side again and square both sides. So what I'm going to actually do is before that I'm going to expand these squares. So it's going to be x squared plus 2xc plus c squared equals 4a squared minus, nothing's changing yet, x minus c squared plus y squared plus x squared minus 2cx plus c squared. The reason I expanded those squares out is, again, we should see that there's some terms that we can cancel out, an x squared and a c squared from both sides. 
So I've cleaned up what I had a little bit, just writing all the terms that so far haven't canceled. Again, I have this negative 2xc over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the right hand side because it's going to combine with this 2xc. And I'm also going to move the 4a squared over um, just to isolate the square root. And so what we get is 4xc minus 4a squared, and that's going to equal negative 4a times the square root, which still is unexpanded inside. We notice all terms are divisible by 4, so for our sake, I'm going to divide everything by 4, and that's going to give me xc um, actually, I can divide by negative 4, which would make this negative xc plus a squared equals a, and then our square root. Not bad so far. And finally, I have a square root all by itself, and I can square both sides. And what that's going to give me, again, squaring on the left side, x squared c squared minus 2axc plus a to the an a squared xc plus a to the fourth is going to equal a squared times everything on the inside our x minus c squared and our y squared make that a little bit neater for us. x minus c squared plus y squared. It looks like we haven't made that much progress, right? It still doesn't look so great, but actually we're getting super close. So now that we're here, what we're going to do is expand the right hand side a little bit. Um, I'm not going to rewrite the left just for simplicity. And this is going to become an a squared x squared from the first term squared minus a 2a squared xc plus an a squared c squared term plus an a squared y squared term. And what we should notice here is thankfully something cancels out. We can get rid of these minus 2a squared xc. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move all the x squared terms to one side and all the ones without any x's and y's to the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this term over here and I'm going to move this term since it has no x and y's to the other side. What that's going to give me is a to the fourth minus a squared c squared that's going to equal, I've got my a squared x squared, I'm subtracting an x squared c squared, and I still have my a squared y squared. So this is just a rewriting that's going to allow us to do some factoring, because on the left hand side I can factor out an a squared, and I'm left with an a squared minus c squared. And on the right hand side, I can do the same thing by factoring out an x squared, leaving me with an a squared minus c squared, and then my y terms. I think this is probably the trickiest part of the entire derivation, so if you need to pause and think a little bit about where the terms went, I highly encourage that. We're so close! We have two a squared minus c squareds on both sides, so it'd be nice if that was equal to something. Well, if we think back to our original ellipse picture, we have this distance c, right, which are our focal distances, and we have our distance 2a, which is the distance total. Well. If I make it such that the total distance is 2a and the distance from one focal point is equivalent to the other, that would give me a distance of a along each of these. So what I'm actually creating is this right triangle here, 
where the hypotenuse is A and the lower leg is C. Well, we also defined this upper leg on the triangle to be B, or the minor axis, or half the length of the minor axis. And the relationship is that A squared, the hypotenuse, is equal to B squared plus C squared, also known as B squared equals A squared minus C squared. This is going to help simplify our equation a little bit because we can substitute that in, in both places into our equation. So what we have is a squared b squared equals x squared b squared plus a squared y squared. This doesn't quite look like the equation of the ellipse we know, but if we divide both sides by a squared b squared, what we are left is 1 equals, over here the b squareds would cancel, and I get x squared over a squared plus, and here the a squareds will cancel, and we'll get y squared over b squared. And that is indeed the equation we were expecting to get. But remember, 1 equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared only works if the center is at 0, 0. If I instead want the center to be at hk, I need to use my understanding of transformations to shift accordingly by an h and k. So this would be an equation for an ellipse. Now remember, it only works if the major axis is horizontal. Right, that's how we had oriented our diagram before. If it's not horizontal, we need to put the A with the Y term because A needs to be our largest variable. If 